Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, joining us for today's webinar on occupational health and safety. Um, we welcome all of you and we believe you would enjoy this session so that we know exactly what to do to implement in our various workstations to ensure our staff and the very people we so cherish and love are protected in the working environment. We know for a principle, the basic idea of occupational health and safety is to have a, a safe working environment for all staff. And even as managers and CEOs, we also work or partake in some of the activities on the floor, uh, on the production floor. And we all desire to work and go home safe and sound without any injuries. So that's what this meeting, this today's webinar is all about. We have our regular uh, experts, Fred Jamna, who is going to take us through the presentation and highlight all the key things, the mandatory things we will have to do to make this a good one for us. On behalf of the Wacom team, we welcome all of you. This is Wacom, the West Africa Competitiveness Program. For those of you who've been with us throughout most of the period, we use this, we call them the Wacom webinar series to pick on topics that are relevant for all actors to discuss. Today is the very last of such webinars for the year 2020 and we, as we proceed for our Christmas break. So please, let's look on our screens. We're going to conduct a short poll and the polls will give us, a, the poll will give us an idea of what uh, we, is happening. So once the polls are conducted, we would have a fair idea and then we'll move straight into action. So please, let's answer the question for us. We crave your indulgence that we should all attempt to answer the question. Are you aware of any standard on occupational health and safety? It's a yes or no. Have you received any training so far on occupational health and safety? It's a yes or no. Are you implementing any occupational health and safety standard? Yes or no. So three questions. And so we wait for your answers and then we can proceed from here. Thank you very much for taking time to answer these questions. Good, we're still waiting. If you have done it, about 50%. So if you haven't done it, please take a second, just click yes, yes, no, no for us. So we are able to wrap up and then move straight into the presentation. As I can see people attempting, that's good. Yes, uh-huh. Okay, so in the next countdown, we move on. Okay, so 64% are saying they are aware of uh, the standard. Uh, another 55 have received training. Another 73 are implementing something on occupational health and safety. But the key point is that we want it to be 100%. So the 36 percent who have uh, are not aware today, we thank you for joining us. We'll raise you by the time we are done. You'll be joining the 64 to score 100. The 45 percent would also be worked on, so that we'll be able to move on in that space. Without taking much time, I hand over to Fred Jamina. Please, before Fred comes, the Q and A button. You click, and you have any question bothering you on occupational health and safety. Please put your questions there as soon as he starts, so that once he's done, we'll take the during the question answer time to be able uh, to answer your questions for you. Any question that bothers on this particular topic, please do not hesitate to do that. Thank you very much, Fred. Please go ahead. Thank you and <clears throat> welcome to this uh, very important subject matter. Um, I I'm, I'm very happy that at least about 60, 64% of our participants are aware of the standard and uh, most of you are also implementing the uh, occupational health and safety uh, system in your workplace. Um, this is just an introduction to um, 
the topic and I believe you have the opportunity to actually visit you on site to see what we've been able to do so far. So uh, the, for today, let's try to just have an overview of uh, occupational health and safety uh, system. Uh, so basically our discussion will focus on the health and safety in the workplace and uh, why is it suitable for all people in employment. We are saying all the staff, everybody is involved. Health and safety issue is a shared responsibility. And it is intended what we are going to discuss to raise awareness for the 36% uh, percent of our participants who says they have no idea, at least to get them to know something about the dangers of their work so that they will be are able to prevent injury at the workplace. It is also designed to help you understand your duty towards your fellow workers. So it's, it's a shared responsibility, it's everybody's responsibility, as well as your employer's duty towards you and how to manage the hazards and their consequences relating to your occupation. <clears throat> so, in a nutshell, the, just to explain occupational health and safety, some will say safety and health, but now it's even gone bigger than that. You know, integrated system, we talk about environment, health, and safety systems. So they are all interlinked. And then we we'll also try to explain how we can prevent accidents, you know, what is the, the extremes of the failure to manage. Uh, safety at the workplace and then also look at management's commitment to health and safety you know we always say that management commitment to any of these management systems is very critical it's crucial if you can get a good outcome of whatever you are trying to implement management commitment is key it's crucial and then trying to uh, explain some of the critical components of any health and safety program then the we try to look at some of the visual hazard and some types of work that is generally associated with these hazards. The hazards are numerous, but we try to focus on the few because this is just an introduction. When you have the opportunity to meet you one-on-one -on -one at your workplace, then you'll be able to go into further details. But before I start, you know, for the benefit of those who have no idea or very little uh, information on that, let's try to define the key terms that you are going to use. I'll say the words that you are going to use. Um, before any meaningful uh, discussion of occupational health and safety, let's try to understand you know, what is meant by health. We all use the word health every day. But when we ban this ISO, uh, 45,000 standards, especially those who went for the auditor training and other safety uh, training. It's a professional course and it's so detailed. So you should be able to understand the words that you use so that uh, you use them appropriately. Health, you refer to the protection of the body and the minds. So normally you're only looking at the physical thing that you see, but it's the body and the mind of people from illness resulting from material processes or procedure used in the workplace. So look at it from the body and the mind of the worker. Then safety talks about the protection of people from physical injury. The borderline between health and safety is ill-defined and I have to stress that. And the two words are normally used together to indicate concern for the physical and the mental well-being of the individual at the workplace. The physical and the mental well-being of the individual at the workplace. Then let's look at you say welfare, the provision of facilities to maintain the health and the well-being of the individual at the workplace. Most of the welfare facilities may include washing, sanitation, arrangement, 
provision of drinking water, heating, lighting, accommodation, then the clothing, all kinds of uh, this ambient conditions that we talk about the prerequisite that will make the workplace a conducive place to work within. So the first arrangement you also consider the welfare facility together with the absence of what injury and then talking about the safety of the individual worker. So on the global scale, poor health and safety management costs around 4% of the global GDP, which is unacceptable. And this ISO 45001, that is the one that contains all the requirements for organizations or companies to comply with, so that they'll be able to uh, come out with a proper and a robust health and safety system to protect the health and safety of their workers. The standard in your normal structure is just like any other management system standard. We call it the high level structure you know, of any management system. So it looks like any other management system, like the environmental management system, the quality management system, the food safety management system, they, they, they look alike. So this, our introduction discussion today, we'll just try to look at some of the general background information on occupational health and safety, and the magnitude and the variety of health and safety problems worldwide. So we are linking it to what pertains on the global uh, level and try to explain the role of safety management because I believe, especially those of you who have gone through the training and are implementing, you know, we always have somebody responsible to manage uh, health and safety issues at your workplace. So what is it? You know, occupational health and safety. Let's say it's a discipline with a very broad scope involving many specialized fields. So you see that they tell you to have fire drills, first aid, environmental, all kinds of things. So the discipline is quite broad. And it is to promote the maintenance of high degree of physical upset because of the definition of health and safety and welfare. The physical, mental, and the social well-being of workers in all kinds of occupations. It is the prevention among workers of adverse effects on health caused by their working condition. So if we work under a very, very harsh environment, it will have effects, a negative effect on your health. It is there to protect workers in their employment from risks resulting from factors adverse to health. And I've always said that wherever you have hazards, you have risk because that is the resultant effect of failure to manage the hazard. It will lead to risk. And there are several types. You're talking about injury, you're talking about accidents and all of that. Near misses, they are all as a result of what failure to manage hazards that is associated with the work you do or where you work and what you do. And then trying to maintain the maintenance of workers in an occupational environment. Talking about the environment is very critical. That's why some uh, systems included the management of your environment. So it becomes the environment health and safety system. So you adapt to your physical and mental needs of your workers. So the adaptation to work to humans, that's how you put it. Adaptation of work to humans. You make the work very, very conducive and then also ensure that it will not cause injury or harm to the worker. So by and large, we're talking about being both health and safety concerns. You know, we are talking about safety in terms of social, mental, and physical well-being. So here we will talk about the mental 
status of your worker. So any successful occupational health and safety practice will require that there should be a collaboration and participation of both the employer and the worker in terms of health and safety programs. It involves the consideration of all kinds of issues related to occupational, whether the medicine, the industrial hygiene, the toxicology, education, engineering, safety, economics, that is what you, the way you say, the posture, and then the psychology. So occupational health issues are often normal in our side of the world, less attention than occupational safety. So you see how you place emphasis on the safety and forget about the health because you focus on the physical service of the individual worker. Go to workplaces and they will say safety first and they put a signage there and they spell out all the do's and don'ts. Hardly will they talk about the health aspects. So here we are talking about both important is that the issues of both health and safety must be addressed equally in any workplace. Both health and safety, that is why I took time to explain what health means, what safety means, and what the welfare of the worker also means, so that you get a clear understanding, and therefore you'll be able to incorporate both in our uh, desire to prevent all kinds of negative uh, effects arising out of our work. So we are here to explain the health and safety, to go beyond the mere prevention of accidents. So it is all aspects of your working condition. It's not only the prevention of accidents. But accidents is just one of the risks that you may encounter in the course of our work. And also to explain why management should commit to health and safety issues at the workplace. And one of the most important thing is that I'm glad that you say 73% are implementing the training aspect because when we are giving a firefighting device or equipment and you are not trained, properly trained, I'm talking about hands-on training, how to use that device, we cannot use that to prevent hazard or risk at the workplace. Talking about PPE, we've been giving you all this, but you have to train you how to use it appropriately and at the right place at the right time. These are some of the training elements that you should focus on during your implementation of health and safety systems. And also to recognize the number of the hazard, occupational hazard, and sometimes of work, you know, the hazard that are generally associated with the kind of work we do. Because if you're able to identify the hazards, the hazard identified and assessment is very critical, then you'll be able to put in place measures to prevent this risk that are associated with your work. And also to try to discuss some examples, the range of hazards in the workplace. So it is important for us to know this. Why poor working condition and suitable, there's also a conducive work environment, conducive work environment, meaning that it is good, it is not bad. We are saying that poor work in conditions will affect the workers' health and safety. Health and safety. Let's talk about one example, a classic example is the use of pesticide in our agricultural work. Those of us in the primary production we use a lot of pesticides. The worker can be exposed to the toxic chemicals in a manner of ways. In a manner of ways. One, when you are spraying the pesticide, that is the application of the pesticide. You may inhale the chemical during and even after the spraying. The chemical can be absorbed through the skin, that is the physical injury, that damage that we're talking about. Workers can also inhale or take in and guess the chemicals. If they eat, that's why sometimes you see the 
safety and health signs, they said don't eat at the, the workplace because the kind of work that you do, you may contaminate your good self. They said don't drink, don't smoke. They're telling you to wash your hands. A lot of people will not consider this as a safety measure, patient health and safety measure. COVID has taught us that you should wash your hands and you wash it properly properly and with the right uh, material. And if you are drinking at your workplace at such poor working conditions, under poor working conditions, what are you doing to yourself? You become contaminated with some of the chemicals that you are exposed to or you are even using to make sure that you get things right at your workplace. So the management of this health and safety is very, very important at your workplace. Why? Work plays a central role in our lives. Most of us are workers and we spend at least eight hours a day in the workplace. Whether it is on the plantation, that is on the field, the farm, or even in the office, and especially in the factory environment. And most of you are producers or manufacturers, and you spend most of your time in the factory environment. Therefore, work environment should be safe and healthy. Healthy means that absence of some of these negative effects, hazards. We're talking about hazards. Yet, it is not the case for many of us. It is not the case for many of us. Even though we spend most of our time at the workplace, talking about the office, on the farm, or in the factory. Every day, all over the world, workers will face a multitude of health, health hazards. And some of them, because of the kind of work and even the environment where you work, you inhale a lot of dust gases, very toxic gases, the noise levels are so high, vibration, extreme temperatures, either very hot or very cold. And we are exposed to this almost every day because I've said we spend most of our time in these places. Therefore, before I go to the next slide, in every country, there are several institutions or agents responsible for ensuring that you are adhere to some of these regulations. In Ghana, we have the Environmental Protection Agency, we have the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the factory office uh, directory that ensure some of these things are done. We have uh, the Environmental Protection Council, we have the FDA, we have the Food and uh, Drugs Authority, that's the FDA, we have Ghana standards, but all of them trying to make sure that we adhere to some of these regulations so that AMA will come and say the noise levels are too high, they are polluting because we are involved in extractive work in the whole environment, dusty, we are milling, all kinds of things, and people are inhaling dust all over. So there are institutions in Ghana that are involved. That is why patient health and safety is very, very critical and very important in our workplace. Otherwise, the factory directorate will come and tell you to shut down because things are not right. And you are working with human beings. You affect their health and safety, their well-being. So unhealthy or unsafe working conditions are not limited only to factories. They can be found anywhere whether in the workplace, whether it's indoor or outdoor. I've mentioned a few of those poor working conditions. Extreme temperatures, talking about heat, some very cold. You work in the cold room and you should be protected. Most of our workers, let's bring it down to the primary producers, talking about you're cultivating cassava or pineapple orange. And in some cases, some are miners, extractive industry. They are working outdoors. 
and can the conditions can pose many health hazards and safety hazards as well. Poor working conditions can also affect the environment in which the worker lives. We live around and starting with the mining area. The water is already polluted because people are doing illegal mining. These are all issues related to occupational health and safety. The people who are standing in that pool of water contaminated with cyanide or mercury, they are also exposed to some of these uh, dangers or the hazards. The living environment are the same. In some cases, the workers live in that people like the farm village and they are exposed to whatever uh, is being done by way of the work they do and even how they contaminate the environment. Meaning that occupational hazards can have harmful effects on the worker himself, your family, if you are living very close to where that activity is taking place, and other people in the community. That is why you see all these regulatory agencies are trying to enforce the laws regarding occupational health, environment, and safety. So everybody is in, in this problem. Your family, your good self, and the community alike. Now let's look at some of the range of hazards. I'm saying that this is an introduction. You will not go into the specifics and even show you some examples. But let's have an idea. Those of you who have benefited from training, there are several levels of training on occupational health and safety. The unlimited number of hazards that can be found in almost any workplace. There are obvious unsafe working conditions such as unguarded machinery, the cutting equipment is cutting, there's no protective guard, nothing, slippery floors, or inadequate fire precautions. There are cut a number of particular insidious hazards. That is those hazards that are dangerous, but which may not be obvious for us to see. They include chemical hazards. You know, that is why where you store your chemicals, your reagents, you said you should have some control, put your, in all the relevant uh, 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 signages to caution people, to warn people, to educate them. Chemical hazards, some from liquids, solid, dust, fumes, vapors, and gases. The physical hazard, talking about noise, vibration, unsatisfactory lighting, especially in the office space. You go into an office and you think it's a disco, a nightclub. You can't see what well. it will affect your eyes, like we're talking about your health. Radiation, extreme temperatures, I've mentioned. You also talk about the biological hazards, such as bacterial viruses, infectious waste and infestation. You dispose of your garbage, your waste, anyhow, both solid and liquid. You are contaminating the environment. You are exposing the people, the workers, everything to some of these uh, hazards. Then you have the psychological hazard, resulting from stress and strain. Well-being, the workers' well-being, stress. So much workload that we want you to complete within eight hours and we put a lot of stress and strain on you. This is the psychological hazard. So you see that the person is always in a very bad mood. The next minute he's happy. Just give him a second later, he's moody. Very angry, not friendly, doesn't want to talk to anybody. That is a psychological hazard arising out of your workload. Hazards associated with the non-application of economic principle. You sit, it says sit upright. But this is a chair has no backrest. So you are only burning. They say go and weld, and the space between where you are and the equipment or the device that you are welding is so small that you have to squeeze yourself under. So you come back and your spinal cord, because you do that often, you can't sit straight, you can't walk straight. You are 30 and you look like somebody who's 75 years old. 
you work hard, and then you find yourself in a very poor physical condition. So these are some of the things. They, you work with the computer, they should give you something to screen off the radiation that's coming from the computer screens. These are things that you normally overlook. But you are saying that even improper sitting and workstation design, poor design work practices will affect your health. Most workers are faced with a combination of this hazard at their workplace. For example, it is not difficult to imagine a workplace where you are exposed to chemicals, unguarded and noisy machines, go to the factory floor. And if you stay in the factory for a long time, from my own personal experience, because I visit them often, the people are always shouting. When they are even talking on phone, they are shouting because they are used to live in that noisy environment and it has affected their health. He's talking to you, you are just about two or three meters in front of any shouting because of unguarded noisy machines that they work with. Hot temperatures, hot, very hot temperatures, they are used to it. Sleeping floors, they clean and they don't mop properly, especially in the factory place. And they want aesthetics. So instead of putting the floor, a finish that can be well cleaned and mopped well, they want it to look beautiful. So they put polish Italian tiles or Spanish tiles, granite, well polished, very safe in the factory floor or within the office corridor. It is not good enough. You are exposing your staff and your good self to risk accidents. Think about your own workplace. There are various hazards that are there that you can find out. And with this kind of uh, introduction, discussion, you'll be able to identify a lot of the hazards that are associated with the work you do or moving around you. Now let's look at this standard that tries to address this occupational health and safety issues. The ISO has introduced the ISO 45001, the one that has the, the specification, that is the auditable standard. And the latest edition published in 2018. And like the, any other management system standard, you have the scope that to try to define the application of the standard, then the references that are mandatory that are very necessary for you to look at, to be able to apply and then implement the requirements we have. Terms like I said, what is safety? What is health? When you go into the food area, you may find the dichotomy. But here, we try to define it so that it will relate to patient health and safety. Then they look at the context of your organization. What you do, what you stand for, what is the purpose? These are all defined. The role of leadership, I said, to be able to come out with a very good occupational health and safety system, management commitment is key, leadership. Planning, how do you plan it? Because you identify your workplace hazards and you have to plan how you are going to address those hazards. And even if you cannot take it away completely, you'll be able to prevent that frequent accident, like driving a very fast car. You should be able to plan how you drive the car and so that you avoid unnecessary uh, accidents and causing harm to your good self and the people around you. Some of the support services and activities, then the key operations and how you factor occupational health and safety. And I'm saying that I'll emphasize art environment because they are all interrelated and they are interactive as well. Talk about the performance evaluation, monitoring, and how you can improve the same structure for any management system standard. So for this standard, the safety policy, it will ask you to draft a safety policy. And this policy is to prevent injury and ill health to staff. 
it will not leave you there. It said continually improve the performance of your occupational health and safety system. And while you are complying with the applicable le legal and other requirements, I said in each country, especially in Ghana, there are several regulations or statutory requirements regarding occupational health and safety. The labor law is in there, environment, everything is there, food safety, quality standard, they are all there. And therefore, you try to identify this applicable legal requirements and you try to put in place a system that will address those requirements. Your management, company's management, talking about the individual, either you are in the share butter, cosmetic, fruit, vegetable, cassava, the management, you are responsible for ensuring that your employees are trained in approved work procedures. Sometimes, very simple thing, you see the cover note, somebody who's welding the welder, and the women will even protect the eyes. You are there to provide those PPEs and train them how to use it and ensure it is used appropriately. The right tool for the right work. Right tool for the right work. Don't use a forklift to raise the staff to pack things on top of other pallets in your warehouse or store. It is not appropriate. That device is not for lifting staff to pack or to load things on top of whatever you stack. See, personally, I'm talking about staff are required to support. That's why it says it's a shared responsibility. Everybody is there. Health and safety issues, not for one place, not for the manager or the staff. It's everybody's. So you are supposed to support the program and make health and safety a part of your daily routine so that you can ensure that you follow the safe work methods. Use the right device, the right tool, the right machinery to do the right job. The standard ensures continually improving the occupational health and safety system. So if you are not undertaking any of these activities that will ensure continual improvement of the system, I'm sorry, you are not doing well, you are not uh, complying with the requirements of the standard because the standard will encourage you to continually improve your system. It encourages your company to be committed to satisfying any interested party. So here, when you are drawing up your program, including the visitors, the people that come to you, the subcontractors that come to do work on your premises, with the excellent health and safety performance. And please, that is why in most of you, most of you, you find that in the construction site, they put the safety, uh, like the signage, the billboard, the do's and don'ts, and the areas that you can go, the areas that you cannot go, and the right people to wear as you enter the construction site. And then also, please let them know, let them aware of the current legislation, the regulation regarding the kind of work that you do, talking about your occupational job. So now let's try to sum up. Some of the key points to remember, if nothing at all, go home with this. Those who have gone through the training is an additional information. You know, certain things you are talking about, uh, the learning curve. Every day you are learning new things, so there's no end to education. One, occupational health and safety encompasses the social, mental, and the physical well-being of the worker in all kinds of occupations. Two, poor working conditions have the potential to affect the worker's health and safety. Three, unhealthy or unsafe working conditions can be found anywhere, whether in the workplace, even your home, irrespective of it being indoors or outdoor. That is what you should consider anytime, anywhere, it is everywhere. Poor working conditions can affect the environment, 
That is why some management are the environment management aspect to their program. You are talking about yourself, your family, and other people within the community. And the physical environment around the place where you work. If you are doing any extraction or farming activities, please consider the risk from exposure to workplace and talk about hazards. Work-related accidents and diseases are common in all parts of the world. And often have many direct or indirect negative consequences on the worker and their staff. Why are we emphasizing the worker? Because we are talking about the extent of exposure. You know, risk, we're talking about the frequency and the extent, the degree of exposure that will determine the consequence, the outcome, the hazard on your health and your well being. A single accident or illness can mean enormous financial loss to both the worker and the employer. So let's try to make sure that we prevent that frequent accident. In some cases, we need to talk about near misses incident. We should try and minimize the frequency. Effective workplace health and safety program can help you save the lives of your worker by reducing the hazards and the consequences. Effective programs can also have positive effects on both the worker in terms of morale and productivity. They are very strong, healthy, excited, talking about the mental well being, always excited, it's not moody. That will ensure good morale and that will lead to high productivity. You can save the employer a great deal of money because we are not treating injured people. People are not suffering injuries because of what they do. We spend little on medical care. Now let's try to conclude. Efforts in occupational health and safety must aim to prevent industrial accidents and diseases. Prevention. And at the same time, recognize the connection between the workers' health and safety. So don't talk about only safety, give them the boots, the volunteer boots, the hard cuts, and all that, and forget about the health. Look at the workplace and the environment outside where you work. It is very critical, crucial that the employer, workers, and the unions are committed to health. So the union should not kick against some of those measures that will ensure adequate health and safety management systems. You should rather support them, encourage workers to uh, apply the principles that it then. And then also, every occupation can be faced with a multitude of hazards. So don't say you are an office staff and therefore you are isolated or isolated from some of this uh, uh, hazard coming out of your occupation or be where you work. Occupational health and safety please addresses the broad range of workplace hazard from accident prevention to the more insidious hazard including toxic fuel, dust, noise, heat, stress, etc, etc. So we've gone beyond the physical and the mental uh, will be a first time. Preventing work-related diseases and accidents must be the goal of your occupational health and safety program, rather than attempting to solve problems that they have already developed or caused. If you try to uh, solve or treat an injury, you have not done much. I must say that this is just an introduction, so it will not give you all the details, but we hope that the time will come for us to do on-site training, take you through some of the activities like the fire drills, health, uh, first aid, this environmental impact assessment and all that, that will 
going to be a very good and comprehensive regional health and safety management system. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Fred, for taking us through this presentation and highlighting all the key things we have to do and we have to know. So now we will look at the question console and then find out questions that have popped up. Um, so far, there are a number of questions, but they all relate to certificates, whether certificates will be issued for participation. Um, just like Fred indicated, this is the very first step, is the very first introductory uh, or introduction to the whole concept of occupational health and safety. There are other aspects that we anticipate we can build on and then uh, take you through before we can give that certificate of participation. That would give you a wider range of ideas that you understand all that there is, all the various tenants associated with occupational health and safety. For, so for this, there won't be any uh, certificate issued. Um, we looking up to um, a more enhanced year. We don't know what the year would be, but we are all hopeful. If we are able to have face-to-face -face, uh, meetings, then we would have a face-to-face -face session 2021 where the other elements of occupational health and safety will be brought on board. And after that session, like Fred indicated, we can issue certificate of participation. Then we know you can do more as he said. You, if you recall in all the presentation, he says that this is the introduction. So it, it wouldn't be fair within this 30 minutes, 40 minutes to overload the information for those who do not have the idea, it would be something else. So thank you all for your attention. And then I would also ask if there are further questions, further clarifications, you may please uh, ask uh, the question so that we would be able to proceed with the questions from Fred. Fred, so far, our council was all, all the questions were on certificates. Is there anything else? If no question is coming up, what would you want to tell us to sum up? Okay. Um, I know um, I told you uh, occupational health and safety is a very important requirement. And uh, most organizations want to make sure that whatever training, whatever formal, informal, coaching, whatever, they will get that attestation, some testimonial to show. Okay, sure. Uh, when the religious come to visit or assess you, it's not a matter of telling that I have 10 training sessions on the patient health and safety. They want to see that they've gone through all the full complement of the training in details and they've been giving some kind of testimonial. That is why I knew that a lot of people said that they've gone through the training because those kind of training will take you through the full cycle and even go through some kind of assessment, testing, and then they will give you a certificate. So okay. a lot of organizations that are doing official, uh, global approved training of patient health and safety and the award certificate at different levels. So uh, for now, let's introduce our, uh, our as I say, uh, value chain access to that and then the subsequent training will try to narrow down tailor made if it's about fire right. you do fire and then they'll give a fire certificate but the trainer should be a certified fire trainer uh, exactly. if it, uh, uh, first aid you go if it's environmental things like that will come later but for now let's try to read about the standard and the standard used to be the OSHA the 18,000, which was jointly prepared by ILO, the International Labor Organization, and other standards institutions. And then ISO picked it up from there, modified it, and restructured it with the 45,000. And then this standard of 5,001, there is another version of the standard that will help you implement the requirements of the standard. Okay, thank you very much. So that is it. Yeah. All right. So Fred, now there's a question here yeah. from one of our attendants. That's what do you do if management is refusing or management is not providing workers with the PPEs? What do you do? Where do you take your complaint? Um, 
you know, they, I told you they regulated the visitor all the time. Yeah. For one, I know the directory for factory and office, they will come. And when they come, they try to check whether you have the appropriate PPEs and they are being used. So um, if you have that, it depends on your safety, environment, health and safety manager, the way he draft his reports. So if the requests have been made and uh, does not be supplied, it's not like management will refuse because they know by law they cannot refuse. But they will tell you maybe you don't have adequate funds to provide that. So um, it's not a matter of reporting, but capturing that in your health and safety reports. Okay. Yes. So that is, you have to capture it in your health and safety reports. Maybe one of the other aspects would also be to also engage like your health and safety manager or try and engage management again to let them see all the challenges, the potential challenges as we talked about. I mean, for all that Fred talked about, the psychological stress, the, and the range. I mean, when we talk about the range of uh, hazards, we know that, yes, these are all things that can hurt us in future. And so we have to take steps to address, take these things to management for management to be addressed so that we don't become moody when we get home, everybody to our colleagues and be able to work well and protect mm -hmm. ourselves. Yes. So we have a few minutes. If there is any other question uh, for today, please, you can uh, type in your question. Otherwise, um, whilst we are all here, we would load uh, an evaluation sheet on the screen now for us. Please, uh, if, if any question comes up, we'll answer the question. We'll take the question. But whilst we wait, please, uh, the evaluation form is coming. Uh, help us with uh, your questions, and then we, we can move on. How would you evaluate the content of today's webinar? A very interesting, interesting, not interesting. How relevant is today's webinar for your daily work and business? Very relevant, relevant. It has little relevance or no relevance at all. So please, we entreat all members who are here to help us with this evaluation. And it would help us, just like we've indicated. Uh, the plan is that if God willing, next year we are here we anticipate that we would be able to organize um, either a general face-to-face uh, -face workshop or where it's possible, we may also send the uh, trainers also to the firms, have a cluster and then get the cluster, the expert to come into the yard to train. Yes, we have about 50% who've answered. Please, if you are here with us, it helps us to move ahead. So please do us the honors. It's, it's, we need your, 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 your view. It's so important. Please go ahead and then answer uh, the evaluation form for us. Good. So whilst we wait for the other uh, group of colleagues to take, we want to thank you so much uh, as a team, as a WACOM team. It's been nice always welcoming us into your home since April, May up until now. We've done about eight months of webinars. We've done quite a lot of webinars. And fortunately, we all said it's all been beneficial. So we thank you all for participating. Yes, and so for today's webinar, 60% are saying it's very interesting, 40% also saying interesting. So we'll say 100% interest for all those who participated. For relevance, we have 20%, 80% very relevant. I'm not surprised we were asking for the certificates. As Fred said, that when the, uh, <laughs> the regulators come, they ask, if have you done this, where is your certificate to show? So please, we will do something and get you the certificates. We will be happy to share the prize, cherished Wacom certificates with you. And so then relevance is also 20%. So again, on a scale, it's all 100% for today. This tells us that this program, this topic has been really, really relevant. And we'll take steps to uh, address all the issues that uh, come up. You uh, would like to know? <laughs> There's another one that is asking whether a certificate will be given to all that has been done throughout the year, I guess. Um, I think for this one, almost all the things we've done, we've always said that um, if you're given certificate, we really want to be sure people understand, just like Fred said, even if you go through the normal occupational health and safety, you have to do some assessments, some tests, some um, competency tests to show that you understand what uh, you're doing. 
Um, those of you who participated in our e-marketing course, you realize there was a six weeks course. It was quite intensive. And at the end of the six weeks, certificates uh, were issued out to all participants. And even the well, those who were outstanding, you see it on our social media handles, they are being celebrated all over. And so we would plan and do something of that sort and make sure that people get certificate. But for now, for all the webinars that you've attended, it's for knowledge sharing and bringing in the various things that we need to build us up. So uh, certificates will not be issued as such. But please going forward, it's become a, I mean, once we've all asked as a program, we're thinking through and we'll know what to do in that space. On behalf of the Wacom team, on behalf of Fred, Ebe, Na, Frank, Kwame, Joseph, and Linda, we all want to thank you for being with us throughout the year. Like I said, today is the 18th. Almost next week, we'll be wrapping up and we'll be taking our Christmas break. All of you, a Merry Christmas, and we hope you have time to enjoy uh, your Christmas period with your family. We hope we'll all be safe, stay safe. And then also on behalf of our project uh, manager, Juan Pablo, wish all members who've been listening to us all these months a happy and a blessed uh, Merry Christmas. We hope forward for a more fulfilling COVID-free uh, 2021. So on behalf of the team, once again, we say thank you. And thank you for always welcoming us into your homes. So for if you have any other information, any other thing, please contact Fred per uh, his email or you call him contact now for cosmetics Joseph for cassava derivatives Frank for fruits and vegetables you can contact myself Frank and so we wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021 thank you very much bye bye, bye.